the rescuer, the challenger, and the pro runner. If you're thinking about getting into RGT, which one should you get? If you've been wondering, maybe I can help you today with some answers. Let's take a look. Now, before we get into it, I should let you know, we've done a two-part series on the rescuer already, and then I did all the upgrades that were available for it from RGT. So this is a fully upgraded machine. You'll note there's an interior, it doesn't come with an interior. The Challenger is the one with the rear winch that's hiding up here in the back. So this is a servo winch and it's also a clipless body. That fella has body pins. I've also done a two part series on this, followed by an upgrade video. I've actually ordered these things uh, in order of most expensive to cheapest. These two are actually nearly the same price. Shipping varies around the world, so I'm just going to say what price I pay. I'll give you the US dollar conversion. Just be aware that it will be a little different, but this still gives you an idea, right? By the time you're watching this, there will have been two videos at least for the RGT Pro Runner. Where that's 680 and 670, this guy's actually 570, a whole hundred dollars less than the Challenger. And yet the value seems to be incredibly good. As far as value for money, if you only watched this far in the video, I'll recommend this car straight off. The Pro Runner is exceptional, but wait. I've got a six problem course that have six independent obstacles on a course, and it tests the car's brake over, it's side healing. So the whole point is to see just how these cars perform relative to each other. It's not a completely realistic course. There are a lot of peaks on it. So brake over, cars with poor brake over do tend to suffer a little bit there. And also cars with straight axles and smaller tires will suffer and Again, by the time you're watching this, you've seen this on the course. We know it only managed, I think, problem five from memory. We nearly got problem two, but we were wanting for some weight. So straight axles, small tire size. Yeah, that means the middle of this thing was scraping quite a bit. Both of these guys are running portal axles and 4.75 tires. 4.19 inch tires. What we need to do now is upgrade the Pro Runner. This has got all its upgrades and it crawls better. This has got its upgrades and it crawls a bit better too. Without battery, the Rescuer in its current modified form is 4.35 kilos. Without battery, the Challenger is quite a bit lighter, but remember, the Rescuer has a bunch of brass in it now. The Pro Run is gonna be similar to the Challenger, I expect. What do we got? Yep, the same, 3.2 kilos. So given it's fairly lightweight and they're plastic beadlock wheels, there's not a lot of weight down low. The one thing that this thing would benefit from is bigger wheels. Secondly, it'd benefit from some weight down low, but I'm not gonna do that. Today, we're just gonna stick some Canyon Trails onto this car. They're plastic, vented, single stage foam. Really, the only difference is to go from 4.19 to 4.65 inch tires, and we'll see just how that alone changes the car. It is a different compound, different foam, but crucially, to my expectation at least, bigger tires. Now, before we get this thing onto the rocks, if you're trying to decide which of these to buy, I can give you my opinion at this point. The most fun car of these three, and in fact, one of the most fun trail rigs I own, is and remains the Rescuer. Unlockable diffs, just like on the TRX4 series. It looks brilliant, it like, just, I think the look does a lot for me, honestly. Having the upgrades available from RGT, from the lighting additions to the interior, to having brass, now I just put brass in the front, it's heavy, but it's only in the front, so not in the rear. Um, this thing is just a wonderful car on the trail. I really enjoy driving it. It's been a lot of fun. It's a chassis mounted servo with a three link front and a four link rear. If you want to find out more about this car, check my review. I'll link that in the description for all of these, but have a look at my review and also have a look at how this thing drives. I have a muddy day where I drove this with the TRX4 and it just did so well. It was just a beautifully fun car. All three of these cars have been submarined and treated, maybe not ideally, but they've been through mud and stuff and they've had minimal maintenance. This thing is truly a fun machine. I highly recommend it for fun. However, people's opinions vary and what you get out of a car and its scale varies as well. For me personally, I don't like the Ford bodies, just generally speaking, as much as I like Toyota bodies. This is also a subjective thing, right? But having had this thing out on a four hour long, humid, greasy, wet, muddy run, it didn't miss a beat, just beautiful. This comes close to how fun I found the Rescuer off-road. 
I think my least satisfying vehicle to drive has probably been the Challenger, but that could be a question of personal preference. The rear winch is certainly a fabulous addition. Once I had heavier wheels and I actually got rid of these chai racks and put actual legitimate high racks on, it, it crawled a lot better. Now like the Pro Runner, the Challenger has four link suspension front and rear and axle mounted servo. The Rescuer has three link and chassis mounted servo. You know, the Challenger actually has a few things in common with the Pro Runner. So this could just be a personal preference thing. Both of these vehicles are much more similar and the Rescuer is actually different and here's why. Metal telescoping universal drive shafts. Four link suspension front and rear, Sh um, axle mounted servo, servo winch. On the Challenger, it's rear mounted, and on the Pro Runner, it's front mounted. Both also have the same style of clipless body. On the Challenger, it's in the front, and on the Pro Runner, that clip is on the rear. And there's your there's your winch mounted, your servo on the front there. So this and the Challenger are, are actually really similar. Um, I did say universal axles, this has uh, CVD axles, but I think you'll find they'll be effective with the same. Now the other thing that the Challenger and the Pro Runner have in common, that the Rescuer doesn't have, is a dig. So you can lock the rear wheels up and stop them from rotating, which gives you that lovely tight uh, steering angle. So if you're considering any of these three, check out my reviews for each of them, they're in the description. And there's a second part underneath each, which says rock test. That has how they all went on the six problem course. Spoiler, this went the worst in stock form, in stock form, but again, I think it's because of these small wheels. All three of them come with Dumbo RC radios. The Rescuer comes with the most basic one. It's still a six channel. You've got your buttons on top, there's a button there, and you've got your three position switch. Steering, plastic, four double A's, basic, right? Now I've tried to work this out, but I've been unsuccessful so far. The XA8 comes with the Challenger and the X8E-150 comes with the Pro Runner, but they both look the same. They both have the same sets of buttons. The top looks the same. I've pulled them both, op I've opened them both up and they really appear to be the same radio. They feel the same. It's the same plastics in the hand and everything. I don't really know what the difference is between these two radios, but I would say that if you want to get a more premium Dumbo RC radio, the Challenger and the Pro Runner have you covered there, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with any of them just letting you know. So, the last part of this video is we're gonna smack a bigger wheel on this and we're gonna hit the six problems and see just how much differently it drives. I think it's gonna be better, but I don't know it's gonna be better. We're not adding weight, just diameter. Let's get to that. Problem one with the 4.65 Canyon Trails on 3S power. And already the difference in clearance is apparent. Now I didn't mention this before I alluded to it, when we were looking at the trucks, uh, the the other two that have um, portals, both have CVD front axles, same as the TRX4. Now this thing has those universal front axles, which means vastly stronger and also considerably better steering angle. That would have been a good opportunity for dig. But anyway, it did problem one a lot more easily, didn't it? And straight into problem two. We were hitting the bumper on the entrance to this with the stock tires, but this angle is not quite right. Trying again. Now this car is far from in new condition. It's now, I think this is its sixth hour of driving, hour, since I, uh, pulled it out of the box and four of those six hours were in very wet muddy conditions now these tires are the same size as what you get on the TRX4 but what you do also get on the TRX4 and on the Rescuer and on the Challenger is portal axles and so we're still wanting for uh, clearance here this is going to roll I'd say unless we're quick one last go. The other thing we're looking for now is with our bigger tires, uh, the servo's under more load. Oh yep, there we go, there we go, there we go, done. Not done, <laughs> oh gee. Do you know what, we'll have another go at that. But the servo overcame some uh, load there, so this is the same servo in all three cars, 
and it's not a bad little unit. I like it. There we go. Just have to stay higher. No dig required. Smooth. Nice. Problem three is an interesting one. I don't know that we can get it going straight on, but we'll give it a go. There we go. One thing that this car does well, now that we have the bigger tyres, is it can flip itself back over. It couldn't do that with the smaller tyres. Whatever tyres you get, just be aware, these 4.65s are already rubbing on the wheel arches at um, articulation. So if you go to 4.75s, you're going to have some clearance issues. It'll still steer, but I'd suggest 4.65s. Maybe 4.7s at the most. Don't go to 4.75 if you can help it. Come on. I actually don't expect this car can do problem three. We'll give it a bit of a go though. <laughs> I'd say we're out of luck here. I'm just trying to wedge that front into the crack on the right. Nope, out of luck. I'd say three's out. I'm not sure how doable problem four will be either. The diff got caught in the same spot as uh, with the standard tyres on the entrance there. <laughs> same with the rear. There we go. I don't like our chances without probably using power, which means less control. We'll give it a go though. There we go. Nope, there we don't go. Well, it's not bad though. One thing I noticed when I was out in the mud is the body doesn't really sit down on the sliders, in the sliders like it should. There might be some cabling in the way or something. I'll check it, but not in the middle of this. Mmm, it's close, I reckon. Yeah, the interior is actually getting pressed up. Uh, I'm not sure on what, but it's getting pressed up on something. I think we can probably address that. I'm not going to worry about it now, though. Mmm, even if we get this out, it's not going to be with the level of control I'd like. We are doing better than before, but not better enough. It's got plenty of speed. I really don't want to go back. Last attempt. Oh, we got that. We actually got it. I've got dig engaged. I'm wondering if we can walk the front around. It's probably unlikely. That'd be dramatic in real life, wouldn't it? Oh! <laughs> All right, four's out. In stock form, we couldn't get over this entry to problem five. It's not a lot of difference, is it? 4.19 to 4.65. We're still getting hung up, but only just. It's a lot better. <laughs> not, not better enough though. It's a lovely stable car though. If we can find a good 4.6 or 4.65 tire, like the Canyon Trails, I think the um, Element General Grabbers are also 4.65. Uh, it seems to be about right for this car. I wouldn't want to go bigger. Just gonna try and take the side. Yeah, look at that. Couldn't do that with the stock tires. Hey, brilliant. We struggled here in stock form as well. But I think it's less of a struggle now. Still a struggle. There we go. 
All right, changing angles. This is the only problem that we could do in stock form. So this shouldn't really be worse. The center of gravity is higher with bigger axles, a uh, bigger uh, tires, I'm sorry. But careful with the line and we're okay. Nice, that actually felt quite planted. It looked a bit precarious, but it felt good. And lastly, problem six. Don't know that we're gonna get this one out, but so far we've gotten One, two, and five. Yeah, couldn't do that with stock tires. It's not that these compounds or treads are any better. They, I mean, they could be, but I think diameter is the big one here. Hmm. That's a bit sketchy, isn't it? Nope. I like that this car has the overdrive. There really is good value in this car. Slowly disassembling problem six. This is about the hardest driving this car could endure. It's harder than that four hour mud drive. We're really not being, not being kind to it at all. How are we doing here? Yeah, motor's warm, not hot. You see, she'll be cooking though. Again, we're on 12 volts, so uh, it's hot. And it's not. It is hot, but it's not too hot. I could keep my finger on it. Last attempt on six. I don't think we're going to get it. I'll give it a proper go though. Yep. All right. I'm calling it. Six is out. It's funny, isn't it? Just how different they all are, even though they're from the same factory. I think my most fun to drive is still the Rescuer. I think the far and away best value is the Pro Runner. And if you want a hybrid of the two, really that's where the Challenger sits. You've got your servo mounted winch, you've got your axle mounted servo, you've got your dig. These guys have that in common. Both of these guys though, have your larger diameter tires and portal axles. All three of them have a light kit. I think the best light kit really is on the Pro Runner. Only one of them comes with an interior out of the box. These guys both uh, have tinted windows, so you can't really see through too easily. But I think the Rescuer really does benefit from that interior. So really, you can't argue, I think, with the value of the Pro Runner. But if you have the extra budget to stretch for any of these, really, I'd say probably fun and out of the box crawling ability probably goes to the Rescuer, and I think it is rightfully so, their premium model. But these two have a lot in common and a lot to offer. Which one do you prefer? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Throw me a like as well, and I'll catch you next time on RCTNT. Cheers.